What would ham radio be like on Mars? I'm Mike, N2MAK, and I read this book so you don't need to. Let me share with you what I learned about radio propagation on Mars. If you happen to be watching this video and you're in interested in amateur radio, then check out the uh, Ham Radio Crash Course channel on YouTube. Josh has some great videos and playlists for the ham curious. I'll leave links in the description down below. Now, about a year or so ago, I came across this article and a few others like it. It got my attention and it got me curious. I did a little research and then bought a book to learn more. Earth's atmosphere is 160 times more dense, so naturally sound travels slower on Mars than it would on Earth. In water, sound travels at about 1,480 meters per second because it's a much denser medium. But what got my attention is that Mars has two speeds of sound. Lower frequencies travel slower than higher frequencies. Here's a direct quote from the article referencing the research paper that prompted it. Due to unique properties of the carbon dioxide molecules at low pressure, Mars is the only terrestrial planet atmosphere in the solar system, experiencing a change in sound right in the middle of the audible bandwidth, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, the researchers wrote in their paper. NASA has a website on the sounds of Mars. Not only can you learn more there, but you can make your own recordings and see how they would sound on Mars versus here on Earth. Here's what I would sound like calling CQ Poda on Earth and also on Mars. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, CQ Poda. This is November 2, Mike Alpha Kilo calling CQ for Parks on the Air from Mars, QRZ. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, CQ Poda. This is November 2, Mike Alpha Kilo calling CQ for Parks on the Air from Mars, QRZ. Now we talked about sound waves. So what about radio waves? There are some key differences with Mars that drastically impact radio propagation, like water vapor in the atmosphere, or I should say a lack thereof, reduces the attenuation at higher frequencies. A smaller planet means that there's less ground to cover for sky wave propagation and you could potentially cover a greater percentage of the planet with fewer hops. And the orbit of Mars can lead to more extreme climate and weather because it's much more elliptical than the near circular orbit that Earth has. Perhaps the biggest and most important difference is that Mars is cold. Now, I don't mean the temperature of the planet, which does get cold. I'm talking about its core. Earth's core is hot and it generates our magnetic field. This is, called, uh, this is by what's called the dynamo effect. And it occurs when a rotating, convecting, and electrically conducting fluid maintains a magnetic field. The ionosphere on Mars is just a single layer, unlike on Earth where we have the D, the E, the F1, and F2 layers. The ionosphere is created by the sun on Mars during the daytime, but not much is known about the ionosphere on Mars at night. Well, the total vertical electron counts for Mars are 50 times less than Earth, they can still be used for ionospheric propagation. So the bands are not quite dead, but they're very different. The Martian dayside ionosphere at solar maximum has a peak density similar to Earth at night during the solar minimum. So when we're having the worst conditions here on Earth, that's kind of like the best conditions on Mars. Uh, the critical frequency on Mars is about 4 megahertz. That's about a third of what it is here on Earth, where it's around 12 megahertz. Now, the critical frequency is the frequency at which a radio wave going straight up is going to come straight back down. It's not going to pass through the atmosphere. Um, and so that's different than the, the MUF, the maximum music... Uh, the MUF, <laughs> the maximum usable frequency. Um, and just because it's four megahertz for a critical frequency on Mars doesn't mean that you're gonna to have to operate below that. You can still use frequencies a little bit higher uh, than the critical frequency, and that's because instead of going straight up and down, they are gonna pass through the ionosphere at an angle. 
Uh, the ionosphere on Mars is nearly transparent for frequencies uh, 450 megahertz and higher. So VHF and UHF are going to be fantastic for communicating with, with satellites and uh, communicating with um, you know anything off planet. Compared to Earth, uh, the Martian troposphere is two orders of magnitude smaller, but there can still be some ray bending and multipath effects. Again, uh, much less water vapor on Mars than Earth, so that's going to come into play with, with propagation when we're talking about things like ducting. Mars has 3,000 times less gaseous attenuation of microwave frequencies because of its atmosphere. So the higher the frequencies, you're not going to get that much uh, attenuation like you would here on Earth. So for example, a radio wave at 100 gigahertz um, through a vertical atmospheric path going straight up, the attenuation is going to be less than one-tenth of a dB. Uh, because the Martian atmosphere is dominated by CO2 and uh, N2 gases, that do not have electric or magnetic dipoles, they do not absorb electromagnetic energy from radio waves. So the atmosphere on Mars is gonna be much more friendly, much less attenuation just due to its composition uh, and its density. Uh, that said, there are dust storms and dust storms can attenuate K-band signals. Now these are 26 to 40 megahertz, often used for satellite communications, but the uh, Ka band signals can be attenuated by 3 dB as a result of dust storms. Differences like the core of a planet, its orbit, and so much more can impact radio wave propagation. So like we say in ham radio, everything affects everything. Um, we certainly have our ups and downs here on Earth with the bands, but I am definitely much more appreciative of the conditions that we have here after learning about Mars. And communicating across the Martian surface is possible with skywave propagation, uh, but you're going to definitely have better luck with the lower bands when you take into account the critical frequency. Uh, some additional questions. Now, I these are things that, that were kind of left unanswered that got me wondering and it's certainly going to require more research and probably beyond my my abilities but Mars has two two moons two satellites and remember the attenuation as a result of the atmosphere and the ionosphere um, is much less than we get here on earth when it comes to VHF and above so there's definitely potential for some interesting moon bounce bouncing signals off the moons and back down to the planet. Now, uh, if I were going to Mars, I'm probably going to be bringing an 80 meter off center fed dipole or N fed half wave for communication on the planet. Uh, but to reach back to Earth, that's going to be VHF and higher frequencies. Curiosity is part of what makes ham radio fun. Asking questions, doing research, and trying new things is how we become better operators and advance the hobby and service for everyone else. Uh, by asking myself, what would it be like to play radio on Mars? I gained a better understanding and a deeper under or deeper appreciation for propagation. I hope you enjoy this video and maybe even learn a thing or two. If so, please click like and subscribe to my channel. If you have a comment or a question, leave it down below. I'm Mike, N2MAK, 73.